All right, so we're still on load calculation that will help us to select the correct size of service cable for a residential wiring. Okay, so quickly, we have an example here, and uh, we are going to work with this example to um, know how to select the correct size of main cable. Okay, so here we have a residential wiring with 20 lights, 20 lights in the wiring. Um, we also have three chandeliers, three air conditioners, three water heaters, five ceiling fans, and then 20 octets in arm socket outlets, three refrigerators, and then one washing machine. So these are the things that we are going to um, install in the wiring. So the number of lamps in the wiring are 20, quantity 20. Then here, um, power rating per item. So one of them, we assume that each of these lamps in the wiring will be 15 watts. So 20 of them will give us a total of 300 watts for the lighting. Okay, then we also have chandeliers. So here we have three of them. And then we assume that each of them will be rated 200 watts. So three of them will give us a total of 600 watts. Then we come to air conditioners. Air conditioners are three. And then we assume that each of them will consume 1,500 watts. So three of them will give us 4,500 watts. These are assumptions. Water heaters are three. And then we assume that each water heater will be rated 1,200 watts. So three of them will give us a total rating of 3,600 watts. Then we have electric fans, five of them. We assume that each of them will be rated 75 watts. So five of them will have a total rating of 375 watts. Then we have 13 amp socket outlets, 20 of them. So here we assume 300 watts for every socket. All right. So 20 of them will give us a total rating of 6,000 watts. Then we have refrigerators, there are two. We assume that this will be small refrigerators and uh, that are rated 400 watts each. So two of them will give us 800 watts in total. Then we have a washing machine that we assume will be rated 800 watts. Okay, so we have to add the total of all the loads that are connected in the wiring and that will give us the total connected load of the system so the total connected load here is 17,975 watts all right so this is total wattage of all the connected loads in the wiring so step two we are going to apply diversity factor the reason why we apply diversity factor is that in reality not all the loads that are connected in the wiring will be in use at the same time. Okay, so for residential settings, we can apply a diversity factor between 0 0.4 and 0 0.7. Okay, which means that out of the total load connected in the wiring, we are assuming that at most only 70% of them will be connected all together simultaneously at a point in time okay and depending on the wiring sometimes it may even happen that only 40 percent of the total load will be in use at a particular time so that is diversity factor and so we are going to apply that diversity factor to the total wattage we have gotten from the total connected load so here we are applying a diversity factor of 0 0.7 which means that we are expecting that only 70% of the 17,975 wattage will actually be in use simultaneously at some point in time. All right, so the total connected load times diversity factor will now give us the demand load. Okay, and so if we multiply our diversity factor of 0 0.7, by the total connected load, which is 17,975 watt, we get a demand load of 12,582.5 watts. Okay, 
So this is actually what we are going to work with, which means that at every point in time, the maximum amount of power that will be used in the installation will not be more than 12,582.5 watts. All right. So what do we do again? We move to the next step. The next step, we are going to calculate the current. All these things that we are doing, we are only interested in the current. All right. So now we have the total demand power. And then for a single phase system, we have 230 volts. Okay. So now we have power, we have voltage, but we don't know current. To get the demand current, we are going to divide the demand power by the voltage. Okay, and then in some cases, we multiply the voltage here by power factor. All right, but let's finish with this one and then I talk about the power factor. So here we have power over voltage, which is 12,582.5 watts divided by 230 volts. And that gives us 54.7 amps. So it means that if we are able to get a cable that can withstand or that can safely carry 54.7 amps, we can safely use that cable as our service cable. Or So now what we have to do is that we have to refer to a chart or a table that shows sizes of electrical cables and then they are ampere written or they are current written. Now, the recommended charts and tables you can use for this are the cable manufacturer's tables or standard charts. All right, so for instance, let's look at an example. So if you look at this table, we have the cable size and then we have the maximum current rating to be 40 to 50 amps. This 40 to 50 amps means that you can get a 10 mm cable, but if that 10 mm cable is not quality enough, it may not be able to carry up to 50 amps. You can have another 10 mm cable that is of high quality and that can carry up to 50 amps. So this means that it is not any 10 mm cable at all that you can use for your work. You must make sure that you choose quality cables. And then other factors like ambient temperature may also apply. So comparing these values with the value we got from our calculation, you know that this is totally out. Our calculated value is around 54 or let's say 55 amps. Here we have 60 millimeter squared cable that can carry up to 75 amps. A good 16 mm cable that can carry up to 75 amps is very much appropriate for our system that requires a demand current of 54.7 amps. So here, looking at our demand current and then the size of cable that we have to use and then the amount of current that that cable can carry, um, normally there is no need doing further calculation for power factor. It means our cable is big enough to take care of any excesses. That is simply how you go about selecting the size of service cable that you use for your residential wiring. So it is very necessary to know some of these little, little calculations so that your work will always be safe and then efficient. So there are times that you may need 25 millimeter squared service cable, depending on the load demand of your wiring. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please stay connected. And I want to remind you, if you have not yet subscribed, kindly do well to subscribe, hit on the like button and share with others. Thank you very much again. See you in the next video.